In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create this particular rope or you could convert it to cables and make it such that it's customizable and you can use it in various scenes. So it's going to be a rope generator. And as usual, if you don't want to build it yourself, you can buy the asset on my Patreon store. With that, let's go ahead and begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we can zoom in and just remove this connection between the group input and the group output. Now we're going to keep this group input node because we're going to be using these to actually make this modifier stack completely customizable so that you don't have to enter the node tree to actually make changes. Throughout this video, we will be learning a lot of tips and tricks, so definitely stay tuned for that. The first thing that we need to do is create one specific line. So let's go ahead and press Shift A and search for a curved line. Now, the reason why we're using a curved line is so that we can start and end based on the length of the cable or rope chosen from the input. So let's press Shift A and search for a math node. And we're going to switch this math node from add to divide so that we can divide whatever input we give by two so that we can move it on the positive axis as well as the negative axis. Then we'll press shift A and search for another math node or we can just select this and press shift D and instead of divide we're going to keep this at multiply and we'll multiply this by minus one so that it moves in the negative axis. So let's plug this in here and plug this into the Y of the start and directly this output will go into the Y of the end. We have to get access to just the Y so let's press shift A and search for a combined XYZ node. Now we have access to just the Y socket so let's plug this in right here and of course you could use the X axis in case you want the ropes to be on the X axis and that might be beneficial because if you use a curve modifier the D default is set to the x-axis but I'm going to be using the y-axis itself. Now this divide can go into the y-axis over here and we can plug this into the start and this into the end. Now if we were to plug this into the group output you should be able to see your curve line but the curve line is very very small and that's because the default value is set to 0.5. Let's change this value to something like 10 so that it becomes much longer and over here we can rename this from value to rope length. Similarly, we can change the default value to always be a value of 10 so that whenever you use this node tree in any of your other blend files, it starts off with a default value of 10. The minimum rope length has to be zero. So we're going to change this to zero as well so that you can't by default reduce the length to negative values. So let's keep it at 10 for now. Now I want to create many of these strands. So we're going to do that by instancing this line on the points of a circle. So let's press shift A, search for a curved circle and plug that in right over here. Now, again, the resolution is going to determine how many of these sub strands are there. So let's press shift A and search for a group input, or we can just duplicate it since it's right here, or we can directly use another socket from this group input itself. Let's plug that into the resolution. And instead of the resolution, we're going to call this two sub strands. Now it's going to be an integer with a default of just five. Similarly, we could change the minimum to anything, but I'm going to keep a minimum of three because you require three to have it twist around and we'll keep the max at the default 512 itself. We'll change this value to six for now, or we'll keep it at four for the tutorial. And with that, we can instance this onto each of these points. So let's press shift A, search for an instance on points node, and then just place it over here. Take this curve and plug that into the points. And for the instance, we can use this curve line. Now we need this to go into the group output. So let's plug that into the group output and now you have all of them. The problem is they're all going on the 2D plane and that's because the curved circle that we actually used is on the XY plane. We need it to be rotated about the x-axis so we're going to have to use a transform geometry to do that. Let's press shift A, search for a transform geometry, plug that in right over here and rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Now they seem to be placed at the correct places. The next thing that we need to do is actually resample this and get them to actually twist like a real cable or a real rope. So let's press shift A, search for a resample curve node, plug that in right here. And again, for the count, I do want it to be based on the inputs given by the user. So let's press shift D, bring that in over here. And remember, in case we don't want to see all of the other options that are slowly going to come into the group input, you can just press control H so that only the used sockets are visible. So now here, we're going to plug this in. We're going to call this rope resolution. And I want everything that's related to the rope to be present right at the start. So let's bring this above the substrands. So now that we have that, by default, I want it to be something like 50 and I'm going to change the min to something like 10. And of course, the max can be infinity. So let's just increase that all the way to 10,000. 
So now I'm going to keep the resolution at 50 for now. And I'm going to start making this twist. To get these to twist, we first need access to the individual points. But because they are instances, we can't actually move them. So let's press Shift A and search for a Realize Instances node. So now we have access to the individual points. Now let's go ahead and move them. The way we're going to move them is by actually just setting the position based on its current position. Note that every single point has a position vector that starts from this origin and goes to that point. So it's a vector that looks something like this. And that exists for every single point. What I plan on doing is taking those vectors and just rotating them about the Y axis based on the actual position or the factor of each of the curves. So essentially every curve has a factor that starts from zero and goes all the way to one. So if the factor is zero, it's not going to rotate. If the factor is maybe 0.5, it'll rotate half the round. And if the factor is one, it'll rotate all 360 degrees. So we'll do something like that to get it to actually twist. Let's see if we can get that to work. Let's go ahead and press shift A and search for a set position node because we're going to be setting the position for every single one of the points based on the factor. Now we're going to be using this position slider, but what are we going to be moving? We're going to be moving the position based on the position. So we're going to have to search for a position node, which gives us the vectors. Now we want to rotate this. So let's press shift A, search for a rotate vector node or a vector rotate node. Now we plug the position into the vector. We want to rotate it about the center itself. The axis is going to be the Y axis. So let's change this to zero and this to one. And we want to rotate it based on its factor. So we're going to press shift A and search for a spline parameter. And we have the factor that goes from zero to one. Let's press shift A and search for a map range. Now what this map range is going to do is it's going to take this factor and remap it to go from zero to one full rotation. However, I don't want it to just be one full rotation. I want it to be again based on some input by the user. So I need a group input node. Let's press shift A, search for the group input, plug that in right here. And I want to multiply this with some value. So let's press shift A, search for a math node. And I'm going to change this from add to multiply. And I'm going to multiply whatever input by two star pi, which is one full rotation. Now this value, I'm going to call number of twists or just twists. And that is what we can plug into this two max. Again, we'll keep the default at a value of one. So if we were to take this result and put that into the angle and plug this vector into the position of the set position, it should twist about. And that is exactly what we wanted. Now, remember, we can increase the number of twists or reduce it by this single slider, which makes it super customizable. So for now, I'll just keep it at one. Now that I have these created, I need each of these to have their own individual substrands. So what I'm going to do is instead of actually just having each of these as a cable itself, I want these to be made up of smaller cables. Essentially, if you want something fairly simple, you can just press shift A search for a curve to mesh node, plug that in right here. And for the profile curve, use a simple curve circle. But I think that just makes this a little bit too simple. Of course, you'll have to reduce the radius and that is fine, but it's not the kind of look that I would be going for. And that's because this currently looks like each strand is one single row. I don't want that. It has to be made up of many smaller units. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this curve circle node. This resolution I'm going to keep at something like six. And essentially on each of these points, I want to instance a circle. So press shift A, search for an instance on points node, plug that in right here. For the actual instance, let's just plug this curve circle in. Let's just take a look at what this looks like for now. And this is what it looks like, which is exactly what we want because we want this shape to trace out each of those other curves that we had. But I feel like this radius should be much lower. And of course, this radius would also have to be controllable from the outside. So let's press shift A, search for a group input. Now let's plug this radius in over here. Let's plug this radius in because remember, this radius will determine how thick each of the substrands are going to be. So let's plug this in over here as well. And let's actually switch up these two radii. And now let's rename these. So this is going to be substrand thickness. And this is going to be the sub substrand thickness. Now the next problem is that we can't go ahead and just use this as the profile curve because they're instances. And as you see, you get a warning that says instances are ignored. So instead of using instances, we're going to press shift A, search for a realize instances, plug that in. And now it's real geometry. And you have each cable made up of these smaller cables. Now the smaller cables 
should also have their own resolution so that you can see how many there are. So that might be another group input. Let's plug this resolution in. We'll call this sub substrands. We'll move this to just above substrands and even twists will move to just below rope resolution and we'll keep the default value at six and that should be good enough. For now, we'll just reduce this number down to five or something so that it's easier for my laptop during the tutorial. Now, I think the substrand thickness has to be a little reduced just so that it looks fuller and that looks much better. So you see, that's how you get this complex weave-like effect. And you can actually make this as complex as you want by repeating this process. But I think for now, this should be good enough. Now that we have these, they look really good in terms of just cables. But in case they're ropes, I do want to add in some amount of fuzz. So to add in fuzz, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift and search for a join geometry node, but I want to actually join in the fuzz only when the user says they want the fuzz because if they're doing cables, they wouldn't want the fuzz and it does take a lot longer to render out a good amount of fuzz. So I'm going to press shift A and search for a switch node. Now we can switch between two geometries and essentially if they want fuzz, then we're going to use this join geometry. So we're going to plug this into the true. And if they don't want the fuzz, the switch is going to be off and the false is going to be directly this curve right over there. So hopefully that makes sense. And for this, we're going to use a group input. So again, press shift A, search for a group input and plug this in over here. Now this switch is going to be called fuzz. And I'm just going to put a question mark so that they know, do you want fuzz? And that's what it's going to be. So if you were to just switch this on or off, it switches between the true and false. Now for the true, where we do get the fuzz, we need to add in the fuzz. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this and we're going to instance some hair strands onto the surfaces. So the way we go about that is first distributing a bunch of points on the surface. So let's search for distribute points on faces, plug that in right over there. The density again has to be a group input. So let's select this. And again, we don't want this to remain so large. So just press control H and it just hides everything out. Makes it a lot easier to read later on as well. Either way, let's select this, press shift D, bring that in over here and control H to just unhide everything and add in another socket. This is going to be the fuzz density. Now we're going to change the default to 100. And of course, this can be very, very dense. So let's just switch over to fuzz so that we can actually see what we're working with. And of course, right now we have only the fuzz. We need to join it with the original geometry. So let's plug the original geometry in. This is what we get. Now on each of these points, we need to just instance a small little strand. Let's press shift A, search for an instance on points node, plug that in right over here. And for the instance, we're just going to use a very small curve line. Now remember this curve line can also have its own length. So let's just plug this instance in over here and we'll take the rotation and plug the rotation into the rotation so that it's always pointed outward. Next, we have to be able to control this. So press shift A, search for a combined XYZ node, change this to one, plug this into the end, and this can be another input. Now this is going to be fuzz length and it's going to be a default of maybe zero point let's say 25 minimum is going to be zero and let's go ahead and reduce it down for the time being as well next we need to give this some amount of resolution so for that we have to again shift all of these over to the side press shift a and search for a resample curve node let's plug that in and after resampling it we need to realize it so that we can actually give it some amount of bendiness so let's press shift a search for a realize instances node plug that in followed by a set position so now in the set position we need to use some noise textures so press shift a search for the noise texture and as we do every time we add in a noise texture we have to add in a vector math node switch it over to subtract and the reason we're doing this is because if we were to directly use the noise texture they would all move towards the top right so to prevent that we have to subtract 0.5 on all of the axes then press shift d once again and change this to scale just so that we can scale up and down the effect let's plug this into the offset and there we have it now let's just increase this count maybe we'll keep it at 15 and let's just reduce the scale of the noise and reduce the strength as well now that's all right for the hair particles but if we were to switch off overlays they can't be seen and that is because again they are not actual geometry so to convert them to real geometry we need to press shift a search for a curve to mesh node and plug that in right over here for the profile curve we could use a curve circle but i think that would add in extra unnecessary geometry so let's press shift a and search for a curve line instead now the curve line is going to be on the y-axis 
So let's press shift A, search for another combine X, Y, Z. And the reason we're using a combine X, Y, Z is so that we get access to the Y axis. So let's press 0.1 on the Y axis or 0.2 for now. Plug that into the end and we can plug this into the profile curve. Now 0.2 is clearly too large. So we can just reduce this and you see that you get decent thicknesses only when it's like 0.01 or even thinner. So what we're going to do is we want to use another group input so that we get control over that, but we'll search for a math node and we'll change this from add to divide. Now we can divide it by 100 so that we don't have to use very, very small values during the input over here. Now this is going to be the fuzz thickness. So that is good. Now we can plug this into the Y and that looks great. Now that we have that set, we can go ahead and just set the material. So let's press shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in right here. And for the material, we're going to use the default material. Let's go to the material properties tab and rename this to rope. And along with that, I also want to create another material for the cable. So let's rename this and call this cable. Now this input should come from the user. So just take another group input. And again, take this one and just control H to hide it. Control H and shift D, bring in another input socket for the material. Now, the thing is, if you were to actually send this blend file over, you would want to clean it up and remove all unused assets. So in order to make sure that the rope and cable both stay, no matter which one is being used, you have to convert both of these to fake users. So if you just press this little shield button, it'll prevent it from getting removed even if it's not being used. So that's pretty important in case you do want to clean up your file later on. So now we have both the rope and the cable. Let's go ahead and start messing around with the actual materials. For that, we'll first switch our viewport shading to rendered so that we can see the changes that we make. Then we'll switch over to the shader editor. We'll go to the world properties. We'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And then we'll start playing around with the rope material. Now these materials that I'm going to create are very, very basic. I'm pretty sure you'll get even better rope materials around, but for the most part, it'll do the trick. The first thing that we want for the rope is to select two base colors. So let's press shift A, search for a noise texture, and we're gonna press shift A and search for a color ramp node. Now we're gonna plug the color into the factor and we're just gonna change these two sliders to the two colors that we want. Now the two colors that I want are maybe brownish. And remember, based on what rope you're using, the textures are going to be completely different. Jute ropes look more like they're made out of cloth, whereas you get coconut ropes that are made out of coconut husks or coconut hay, which gives a completely different texture. So I'm just gonna go for something very generic. It's not meant to be photorealistic. Let's go ahead and lift this up a bit and just give it a brownish color. And this one, I'm going to give a slightly darker brownish color, but maybe a bit more towards the yellowish side. Let's plug this into the base color and take a look at what we have. That obviously looks far too dark. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just increase this scale a bit. And now let's just go ahead and play around with these. Lift this up, bring this a bit more that side. And okay, that's one part of it. The second thing is ropes are generally never shiny. So let's reduce or increase the roughness all the way to one. Now I'm going to increase this scale to something like 250 so that it's much finer. The next thing that I want is some amount of bump. So for the normal, I'm going to press shift A and search for a magic texture. And along with the magic texture, I'm going to have to search for a bump node so that it's actually converted into normal data. Now let's plug the color into the height of the bump node and we can plug the normal into the normal. Now right off the bat, it should be much larger than we expect. So we're going to go ahead and just increase this scale to something really, really high. So you can see right off at 100, it starts looking a lot like a rope texture. And I think that would be good enough for most use cases. I'm actually going to bump it up to 150 and I'm going to leave it as is. Of course, remember right now, I'm just arbitrarily using this fuzz. In an actual situation, I'd increase the density really, really high, reduce the length. So maybe the length would be 0.1 and the density would be much higher, 1000 maybe. I'm not sure if Blender can handle it right now because I'm also recording, so I'm not going to do that. You can see what it would look like with higher densities in maybe this image and it should be there at the start and the end of this video. Anyway, I think that's actually all that I'm going to do for this rope texture. The next texture should be the cable texture. So let's first go ahead and select cable over here. Now in the material, let's select cable as well. 
so that we can start working with it. The first thing, it's going to be much more metallic and it's going to be a lot darker. So let's just bring that down a bit. For the roughness, I'm going to use another noise texture itself because that works the best to just show signs of wear and tear. Let's press Shift A and search for a color ramp node just like before so that we can crunch in the values and make it more contrasty. Let's plug that in and just bring this in, bring this in, and of course, increase the scale a bit. I'm not going to go too high. Let's have just a scale of 10. Apart from that, of course, I don't want any area to be completely reflective. So it's going to be 0.1 at least. And over here as well, no area should be completely non-reflective. So I'll go down to maybe 0.8 because this is metallic. It should be more shiny. Now that we have this, we're going to play around with the normal and the normal is going to be a wave texture. Now in situations like this, it would be the best to UV unwrap, but I'm not going to be UV unwrapping. Instead, I'll use the normals because it gives a good enough result that's almost unnoticeable to the eye. For that, let's press Shift A, search for a wave texture. And of course, if you have the node wrangler enabled, you can press Control T to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. If you haven't enabled the node wrangler for any reason, you can add these in manually by pressing Shift A. Now we're going to switch this from generated to normal, and then we can take this plug it into a bump node before plugging it into the normal. So let's search for a bump node, take the color, plug it into the height and take the normal and plug it into the normal. Now that we have that, of course, these areas are a little bit too much. So let's just reduce this. And I think that looks fairly decent. Of course, the strength does seem a little too high. So let's just reduce the strength a bit. Maybe a value of 0.75 is good enough. And now it does look like there's a lot of smaller strands. Now, when you're using a cable, of course, you don't want those hairs particles. So let's go back here and just switch off fuzz by pressing that button. And that looks a lot better. I think I'm going to have to play around with this color ramp where this shouldn't be this bright, but make it maybe 0.6. So I'm actually going to leave that for the cable material as well. Now that we have the cable material created and the rope material created where you could add in fuzz as well, let's just go through a practical example of how you would use this in a use case or any scenario. The first thing that you would require is to add in some curve that this is going to follow. So let's press shift A and search for a Bezier curve. Now let's just move this over to the X axis and let's press tab to go into edit mode. Let's just select these and just press E to extrude and create a few random random areas for this curve to actually move along. So let's just move this E, bring it there. Okay, that looks good. Let's press E again. And yeah, so let's just move these around till we get something that makes sense. So once you get the shape that you want, remember, you can always go to your actual curve properties down here and increase the resolution and play around with these settings as well. I'm not going to play around with that too much. Let's just leave these like this itself for now. The next thing is go back to object mode, select your rope. I'm actually going to call this rope generator. And now in the modifier stack, we're going to add in another modifier. That modifier is going to be a curve modifier. Next, with the curve modifier selected, for the curve object, just choose the Bezier curve and change the deform axis from X to Y. Now that you have it moved on the Y axis, always ensure that you apply the location of whatever curve you have. Otherwise, it's going to move up in unwanted positions. Because remember, the origin always has to be at the same position as the origin of your rope generator. So just take this and press Control A and choose Apply Location. So the moment you apply location, you can see how this starts bending around this curve. You can press G, Y and move it along the Y axis to move along your particular curve. If you don't have enough rope to cover the entire curve, you can always go ahead and just increase the rope length. As you increase the rope length, remember, you might have to increase the rope resolution as well to make it nice and smooth. Apart from increasing the rope resolution, you may want to increase the number of twists or just play around with that until you get exactly what you want. So using this setup, you can pretty much create almost any type of rope or cable situation and play around with it to get various results. So I really hope you found that as a useful tutorial and you learned quite a bit through the course of the entire video. If there are methods to optimize this, definitely let me know in the comments below because it'll help anybody else who's trying to create the same thing. As usual, until my next video comes out, don't forget to check out other videos on my channel because I post a lot of tutorials. So until that comes out, again, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.